Welcome to the unboxing and demoing of the Keystation Mini 32 from M Audio. And one important thing for me was that it said works with an iPad because that's where I want to use it most. Box opens and the packaging is rather simple. There's a quick setup guide. Which doesn't tell you much other than connect the cable and away you go. So that can go. And there's a version of Sibelius. That's a notation software, which I probably will never use, but never mind. It's nice that it's packed in. But the meat of the thing is, of course, the keyboard itself, which is packed like this. It's a very, well, it's more weighty than I thought that it would be. And you have the keys, of course, and you have a volume knob and several other knobs, which are all assignable to MIDI CC message numbers, which makes it highly versatile. And I'll show you in a moment why that is. And all you need to do is plug your USB in and then plug the other side of the USB into your device, whether it be a laptop or an iPad or maybe even an iPhone, I don't know if that works. But what I'm going to do is show you how it works with an iPad. Back in a mo. It's very easy to connect your uh, key station to uh, your iPad, all you need is the camera connection kit that you can buy on uh, the Apple Store or any Apple Store, brick and mortar Apple Store near you. All you do is you connect the USB to your connection kit and then connect it to your iPad. And if all is well, it says connected the Mini 32, so it even recognizes it. And then it works. It simply works. It's really plug and play. And that's nice. Now I've loaded up the Korg IMS20 synthesizer here, which is a, um, a great synthesizer. It really emulates the Korg MS20 very well. If you count that it's only $25 and that a Korg MS20 will cost you around $1200, I think it does its job very well. But what makes it really powerful with this keyboard is that you can assign the MIDI CC numbers to the knobs on the side of your keyboard. And how you do that is you tap global in your IMS20 you go to the help page, which takes a while to load, and then you tap on the MIDI menu item. And here you have all your MIDI CC numbers. So for instance, if you want the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter, it's number 74, it says here. We go back. To the IMS20 and we punch the edit knob and we say we want the knob. Yes I know it's funny and then we say 74 enter and you see that the edit knob goes off. What also makes it very powerful is that you can attach the knob to the modulation wheel and then the modulation wheel you can attach to anything you want via the patch bay of your Korg IMS20. So for instance we have to attach the mod wheel 
and I'm sure you can't see that, but if you have the IMS-20 you'll know what I'll, I'm doing. And attach it to the total. So now with these little knobs you can attach it to the high pass filter, the low pass filter and your pitch. So when you do it here it's... You can hear that the modulation wheel does a lot to the sound. And here we still have it attached to the frequency knob, so we have to attach the knob to the modulation wheel. So we'll go back to our help. Come on. And we go to MIDI. And we look up what the modulation wheel number is. And I believe it's one. Yes, it's one. So we go back. We punch edit and we say knob and we say number one and we say enter and now the knob is attached to the modulation wheel so now we can do the same thing we just did on the screen with a knob and that makes it a very powerful thing indeed. Because you can do the same with the buttons, uh, look up the MIDI CC numbers and you can uh, attach the numbers to the knobs and have fun with your IMS-20. The same works with GarageBand on the iPad, it works with a host of other synthesizers. It's just a very powerful little keyboard making your iPad a mobile studio and I remember the days when I used to carry along a lot of flight cases and I must say I'm liking this.